Hello and welcome to another episode of Schooling Around. I'm Danielle Smith. And I'm Alexis Ware. This week we visited with Stacy Bleskowski from Oxford Middle School as she tells us about the Washington DC trip that a group of eighth graders recently came back from. And then we'll head on over to Oxford High School to peek in on Chaz Millard's broadcasting class. So sit tight for this episode of Schooling Around. November, a group of 8th grade students were able to visit our nation's capital. Alexis was able to sit down with some students that went on the trip as well as the teacher that organized it. Take a look as they reflect on the experience. All right, so last week we spoke with Miss Blaskowski. Guys, I can't even describe to you how many times I've tried to say that over. But this week we are back again to talk about the Washington, D.C. trip. So when is the Washington, D.C. trip? The Washington, D.C. trip is the first full week in November. So we oh, left okay. on November 6th and came back on November 10th. And how is that organized? It's organized by myself mm -hmm. and the travel company. We work with Bright Sparks Travel Company. Uh, so we, it really it takes a year to plan the trip. Okay. Uh, we've already started planning for next year. Right. Uh, so basically we start in October, uh, September-ish and book the hotel and get our time slots uh, scheduled to go to Arlington to watch the changing of the guard. So all of that takes a lot of time and planning to get the right time slot to go there. Right, and like you said, this is an annual trip for all of 8th graders, or is it 7th and 8th graders? It's open to our 8th graders. Okay. Um, all of them can go if they want to. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, the past couple of years, we've taken about 270 people. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're looking to possibly add another bus next year uh, to take 280 people. Uh, so we'll just see how that goes for the upcoming seventh grade class. And with that amount of students, is it just yourself or is it other volunteers as well? So Bright Sparks has a recommendation that we have two um, Oxford Middle School staff members on each okay. bus. So we take two of our Oxford Middle School employees on each bus, and then this year we took nine parent chaperones Great. to additionally help out as well. Okay, and you also did mention hotels. How are the sleeping arrangements for students? So the students sleep in rooms of four, okay. uh, selected by themselves. Uh, sometimes students turn in um, their Google form where they don't know anybody or they okay. don't know who they want to room with. So then I just pull those students aside at lunch and kind of introduce them to each other and then they oh, decide um, that way. Uh, for those particular students. Mm -hmm. uh, so the students stay in rooms of four and then the adults stay in rooms of two. Okay, great. And um, is it obviously both girls and boys go on the trip? Is it only girls in one room, only boys in one room? Yes. Or is it? So okay. we have at the hotel, we have a boy floor, a girl floor, okay. and we have security on each floor okay. uh, <laughs> after uh, we check their rooms um, and we tape uh, their rooms shut when we do our room oh, wow. checks. Um, so then the security guards give me a report every morning uh, that we are at the hotel um, and we've never had any problems where kids right. have tried to get out of their rooms because okay. quite frankly they're pretty exhausted at the end of the day. And going into that, what do students do throughout this day? Or it's a week, isn't it? It's uh, three full days. Okay, three um, days. Four days because we drive through the night uh, two times. Oh, man. Um, but we uh, leave Tuesday night and okay. drive through the night. We arrive in Gettysburg Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. uh, they get to do a battlefield tour when we arrive in Gettysburg. Uh, after they do the tour, um, they go into the museum at Gettysburg. Uh, so we spend... Which museum is this? Um, it's the museum that's housed on the property at Gettysburg. Okay. I'm not sure what the actual name of it is, okay. but they get about 45 minutes at that museum. Uh, then when we leave uh, Gettysburg, we drive into D.C. and have lunch. Uh, this year we had lunch at the Pentagon City Mall. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, uh, all five buses, because we took five buses this year, mm -hmm. we went to the Holocaust Museum. I love um, that. And spent a couple hours uh, going through that museum. 
From there, we went to the White, uh, White House for a picture stop. Of course. Um, we <laughs> were able to see both sides of the White, White House this year. Um, and then from there, we had dinner. Um, and that dinner that evening was all of the buses together, so all of the students and chaperones were together. And then from there, we went to the uh, Pen uh, Pentagon Memorial. Okay. Um, and then Thursday and Friday, the buses kind of do different things because we can't take 270 people everywhere. Right. Uh, so certain buses went to the Capitol and the Supreme Court and Library of Congress Thursday morning, um, while the other uh, few buses went to Mount Vernon. Mm -hmm. From there, we all met uh, in the afternoon for our annual um, class picture of all of the students who go in front of the Capitol. Um, so it's like a panoramic shot that we get every year. This year is beautiful. The sun was shining, no clouds in the sky. It was very, very nice. Um, from there, uh, we had lunch, mm -hmm. and then all of the buses had time that afternoon to tour the Smithsonian Museums. Okay. Um, and we also went to the National Archives where they got to see the Declaration of Independence. Mm -hmm. um, a that, lot of activities. Oh, it's nonstop, nonstop. Is it, is it the same every year? Because like I said, this is annual. Yeah, year. every year we try to, we meet as a staff or the, the teacher teachers and chaperones who go every okay. year when we get back Mrs. Beasley has us sit down within a week of the trip yeah. um, and uh, go over the good the bad the ugly what do we want to change what do we need to keep what can we not live without uh -huh. um, so some years we've added things uh, last year we went to Ford's theater this year it was closed during the time it was wow. under construction okay. um, so next year we're looking at adding some different things just based on the feedback that we received mm -hmm. um, there are certain staples that we feel like are important that we want to go to Gettysburg right. we want to do the Holocaust Museum um, one especially night especially if students have been to the Holocaust Museum here Correct. to go to Washington yes. DC and, and see it as something completely different. And they may never get that opportunity exactly. again. So right. being able to have them see those things is very important. Um, just like we feel like going to Mount Vernon and seeing George Washington's estate right. um, and all of that is important. Um, and then um, a must do is our um, time at Arlington okay. when they see the changing of the guard and we select four students from the middle school to lay the wreath on the tomb of the unknown soldier. Okay. Um, so that's a pretty prestigious honor. And um, how do you choose those students? Students are given the opportunity to write an essay oh. um, about what the wreath laying ceremony would mean okay. to them. Um, it's all done anonymously. Mm -hmm. um, so from there we read the essays. There's a panel of us that sit down every year and read them um, and then make our selection based on what they have written about why it would mean or what it would mean to them to do this. And after you make your selection, is it still remained anonymous or then? No, once we do, because okay. they uh, put their student numbers on what they submit. Okay. So then we can look up whose um, oh, entries. So you don't even know. No, we do the, not wow. know. Yes, we don't know. Okay. It's all done anonymously because okay. we don't want any. Bias uh, yeah, or, exactly. She's um, a really good student. Right. So okay. we just try, we want I it all that. to be anonymous. Um, so when we're done, Mrs. Beasley goes into power school and looks up the student numbers. Yeah. And then she makes a really nice announcement like the day that we choose them at the end of the day she reads like snippets of each of their essays to okay. the school um, and then that's how they find out if they that's were selected. Really big on. Yeah, it awesome. is. And who were those four students? This year it was Aubrey Greenfield, okay. um, Gavin Dell, mm -hmm. who and else? Two other students. And two other yep. students. Wow. Well, yeah, I can't even imagine doing that or even writing an essay. Aiden Boyer. Okay. Aiden Boyer. <laughs> And Nora, it's Nora hard to Wright. Remember all these names. Yes, so thank you. In, in a school this size, yes, I mean that's insane. But going into that, going into the students, we are going to take a break and talk to some of those okay. students and see their perspective. Of Perfect. It. Thank awesome. you. All right, ladies. So, how was the trip? Um, I felt that it was uh, very well organized mm -hmm. and super fun. I think it was a really good experience to experience and just like a really fun time. Awesome. Did you two ladies know about this trip prior to eighth grade or was it a big surprise once you got in? Um, I kind of knew about it because I'm friends with uh, now freshmen, okay. but they kind of told me about like what like it was about mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, me too. I kind of like knew a little bit about it, but that was it. Okay, so were you the first on board for it or did you have to think about it for a little while? Um, I was like... Really of course. All for it. Yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I would too. And then what is your favorite thing that you did while you were in Washington DC? Um, probably going to the Capitol and like all like eating together, I would say. And what kind of food did you eat there? Was it any different 
I mean, I've personally never been to Washington, D.C., so I'm, like, living through your experiences right now, so you have to tell me everything. Um, there was, like, a very big mix of variety of foods. Like, okay. we had Italian one night, which was my favorite, personally. Um, at, I think it was called Buca de Beppo. And the and fact that you can remember that name is <laughs> amazing. <laughs> and um, I, I had soup at uh, one of the, can't remember what it was called, but I know it was like, like you got to choose between different like food court. Food maybe? court, yeah, the food court. Yeah. Was it very similar to the restaurants that we have here, or was it a tad bit different? Um, some were, some weren't. Okay, there's definitely could, a McDonald's because it yeah. has to be right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean. From what I remember, I mean, it it was kind of similar. I mean, they did have different types of, like, meals and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, what was your... Mm, we're going to cut that because I completely lost track. But was it, like, a big sleepover the entire time? Did you get enough rest, or was it mostly... I mean, I got, I got enough rest because after, like, the day, we were all worn out, and we, like... Went back to the hotel, we got, took a shower, and like, we all were just kind of chill about it, I mean. Yeah, yeah same here. I think like, that we got enough sleep, but it was like, just like exhausting, like you couldn't really like hang out. Mm -hmm. Like as soon as you got there, like you would okay. have to go like, pretty much straight to bed, because you'd have a long so day, much. and you were constantly go, 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 go. How, what time did you guys get up every morning? It was like 6.30. 6.30? Uh, oh, cool, Some of my friends better. got up at like 5. Okay. Yeah, just to make sure we were all ready and stuff. Mm -hmm. And about what time did your days end? Sometimes 10. Yeah, 10. It was really late. Awesome. But you guys had fun during the process, right? Oh, yes. Sure. Would you do it again if you had the opportunity? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Okay. Well, thanks, ladies. You're welcome. What a wonderful trip those eighth yeah. graders had. You know, after all, it is our nation's capital and is so rich in history and culture. Yeah, and to see how much fun the students all had and their smiling faces and those pictures that yeah. everyone just saw, it was really great to see, especially because, you know, it's an educational trip as well. It's not like students went to the zoo or anything like that. They were actually learning things that you that you learn in history class and things like that on yeah, this trip. Yeah, it's definitely a place that's on my bucket list for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. <laughs> and also, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll visit Mr. Millar's broadcasting class to see all the great things it has to offer its students. Mr. Millar, the broadcasting teacher, and we're inside. What do you call this room exactly? So right now we're in my control room okay. uh, for my TV studio. All right. So we're looking at all of their fancy equipment. They're very prepared <laughs> for the future if they want to pursue a career in broadcasting of any kind, whether it's behind the scenes or in front of the camera. Can you explain to us the foundation of your class? So this class is built in around different segments. It's part of the career and technical education programs that we offer here in the high school. So our goal is to get kids career ready. We want them to learn the skills that they're going to transfer over into real world applications. Now, I got a hundred and some odd first year kids, so not all of them are going to go down this path. But the ones that do advance on go to a news broadcasting class. And that's where we get really hands on with uh, learning the ins and outs of what, what it's like to be in a TV studio. What do they have to do? What does the technical director do? What does the director do? What does a prompt operator, lighting, talent, you name it, they cover all those jobs hands on. We introduce it in the first year, and then the kids that want to advance on will come into that class. Right. and further those skills. So it is like a part A and a part B to the class, because obviously you don't just throw the students in and say, hey, yeah. Mash these buttons. You yeah, yeah, they, that's what they do. They look at, yeah. they see all these buttons on here, and they think right away they're overwhelmed. But then exactly. it's like, so I give them the chance to break it down to just start on two rows, and then we'll add on from there. We'll learn from that as part of it. So, and it's a challenge definitely to get the numbers through in the first year. But once you get advanced, uh, they start doing some more cool things with it. All right. So for the part A, if mm -hmm. you will, of the class, we're standing behind the TriCaster right now. So is it just? you press one and two to have this pop up on the screen or how is that explained exactly? So we try to keep it as simple as I can because it can be a bit overwhelming. So the first thing we learn is about the different inputs and what is an input? Where is it coming from? What's the connection type that they have? What kind of cables are we using in order to get that connection? So is it an S video, BNC, that type of thing. And then they learn simply each one of these controls commands a different input. So we have 
three inputs. One of the cameras is down currently, mm -hmm. technical issues. Yes. <laughs> but usually we'll have three different inputs that they'll switch between. So it's literally, it's like, so it's very simple, guys. We have one, two, and three. Two close-ups, one wide shot to establish, and that's it. And then we'll add on different things from there. I'll start adding graphics. So we'll have them roll in video. Uh, it just, it's a step-by-step pro -step process. So as simple as possible and adding from there. And I did witness a little bit of your class earlier today. Mm -hmm. So is it where each student has an assigned job to do or can they switch out periodically? Ideally that they're going to be able to be flexible. Okay. And I have adjusted this class every kind of year, every year that I've done this in different ways mm -hmm. to get them uh, most exposure in different areas. But once they get advanced, then they get kind of set in their specific roles. It makes everything run faster because right. we are against the clock like everybody else in the business, and that's yeah. real, real world experience. You get that idea. So we have 50 minutes to produce our announcements. So it's difficult early on to get everybody in there and get it done in time. But once we get, as the year goes on, the production quality goes up because they find their homes. They'll be okay. cross-trained. They'll be able to do multiple positions. Great. It's high school. Kids miss days. Exactly. And sick and everything else but uh, they will kind of find their niches where they work best at. Great. All right. And then after everyone kind of settles, settles in and they begin to do their, I guess, their job, how often does the, the broadcast go out? So we put our announcements on four days a week, uh, every day but Wednesday because we have a late start Wednesday. Okay. So we don't air then, but we go on every other day. We oh, stream with right new through. information. Yeah, That's yeah, it's great. new information. Everybody's kind of got the routine now when to send in announcements when they want things aired, when they want to put things on. And believe it or not, I'm the worst one when it comes to getting <laughs> announcements in. I don't, I always forget to email them, so I have to tell them when we're here to add, and if I have an announcement, which is kind of ironic when you think about it. But um, so we do it four days a week. And then we put it to our YouTube channel. So we stream it actually live, which most people don't know that. Don't turn it on live yet. We're not ready. <laughs> uh, but it, it goes, it's just going to be used to the process. And then once it's ready, we let the we make an announcement out for the building so everyone knows that they can turn it on. Okay. Community members can go on to OHS News Broadcasting, and yep. they can see what the kids are doing there. Uh, we have segments uh, for the last few years of announcements. So, but there's more than that, too. But we try to put up our different content and put it to that channel for now until I find another uh, medium for that. Right. And where do the students get their content? Is it some content? I'm sorry. Is it something that they write themselves and come up with? All the content is created by the students. Okay. So, right now it's my biggest class for news broadcasting, which is really exciting for me mm -hmm. and also more stressful for me. But I love <laughs> that kind of stress. So they are working on their own segments to air in the announcements. So they're working on their own news packages that they'll put in from a creative corner to movie reviews, uh, fantasy football highlights, and yeah. updates and tips and things like that. So. We're trying, I'm trying to give them the creativity that they need in that uh, to go with what their interests are, what they like, and also following the certain forms, and then also understanding time frame. You can ask my fantasy football group about time. They've learned the hard way about Deadlines. getting stuff done. Deadlines. Yeah. Something that everyone, especially in the business, eventually learn about. They yep. have nothing to play with. Yep. Oh, I know. You can ask them. <laughs> you have to stay on top of it. And oh, it's, yeah. There's never a down moment. <laughs> All right, so we got to speak with Mr. Millard, and we even got to see some of the students in action today as they prepared the daily news. We're going to keep a close lookout for those students in the future, and we're going to toss it back to the desk. All right. I think it's great that these students are able to have a modern studio set up in a high yeah, school setting. Absolutely. You know, it'll definitely benefit them as they progress in this career field if they choose to do so. Yeah, and to see how advanced everything is, I mean, these students have the best of both worlds almost. They obviously have the curriculum to teach them the foundations of journalism and broadcasting, but they have one classroom that's dedicated to brainstorming and editing and using all of those uh, different process equipment. But then you walk through a door, as you guys saw, and then it's the studio, you have your green screen, and just all of the different technology to show them what to do in that position. Yeah, I mean, and they are running it as if it's an actual, you know, news segment or exactly. a show. You know, they have their director calling out the commands, yeah. and everyone knows those, those commands and how to respond to them. They're operating like a well-oiled machine. Mm -hmm. and I think I mean, that was most oppressive. Yeah, and that's how it is in the real yeah. world. So it's great that they're getting this hands-on experience now to prepare them for that. Um, but it's now, uh, now time for our weekly recap. Oxford Middle School choirs had their winter concert on Thursday at the OHS Performing Arts Center. A few, a few weeks ago, I decided to go back to the high school, not because I had to, but because I think it's way too often, you know, we forget what it's like to be in high school. So here's a sneak peek at my journey through the high school halls. The 
about right before the bell rings for school to let in. Uh, we are outside, it's extremely cold. You're seeing some of the students walk in right now, so we're gonna go in, get our schedule, and get this. Que tu estás um, hablando en español, o que cosas estás hablando sobre la clase? Hay algún voluntario para eso? Mira, so, solamente. Yo con ellas porque a ellas no les gusta mucho Justin Bieber. Um, también le quiero decir que trate de bajar su obsesión con Justin Bieber porque es lo que está diciendo ella es. We can just make the drill hole, but not, nobody on there is going to know whether or not it made it out of the project. Okay. Well, I mean a little bit. Oh, no. Okay, I'll move. I see the smoke. Yeah. So have you ever burned yourself? Yeah, yeah it hurts. It hurts first. Oh, well, I mean a little bit. Oh no. Okay, I'll move. I see the smoke. Yeah. Have you ever burned yourself? Yeah, yeah, it hurts. It hurts for a couple of seconds. She's not online, so she's like, "Who can from home?" I think so. No, really. Oh, this came out a little disappointing. Okay, then you should have the clothes. Stick that. So crack. Oh, you have a race constant. You have your time. You have the amount of initial and amount of time. So, you know, stay away to first order reaction. You're really good at this. You just cover all of my, oh, good. All of my questions <laughs> back to back. I was going to ask. You know, do students have to test to get into the class? Kind of. They just have to pass the, uh, the honors class. Yeah. Is, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> know that just because you're not good at something right now doesn't mean that you can't improve and get so we just left the news broadcasting class it's about 10 on 5 it's so great that these claps are around you never like have to wonder what time it is right now we're going to men's choir so this should be minutes at a time okay. so they just keep cycling through so within our class we're breaking up into four groups and each of those four groups is going to work with a group of the kids <laughs>
happens, but those are local channels, but everything goes on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, and you will be working in your pairs to analyze that particular document. Uh, we're going to try to get this done before this. But, yeah, so we have to write the EE, which takes the whole year, next year. And then, like, our IAs are just stuff we do specifically in the class. So we write papers. It's a two-year program, a graduate program at Oakland University. And I've done uh, smaller, uh, like, field. Um, just read that last question on the introduction for me. What are we looking to explore in this dissection today? Prepares you for that. Okay. So it prepares you for like your career. So I want to go in the medical field. So this is kind of like perfect for that. And it's very so, hands-on. Yeah. Officially <laughs> worn out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can do this every day. That's for sure. <laughs> so. What we're happy to have. All right. So we just got a, got out of our medical foundations class. It was very interesting. Patties. Chicken nuggets, French fries, French fries, oh, a favorite. variety, <laughs> but they're baked. <laughs> they're not deep fried. Yeah, if you guys want to have lunch, grab lunch. I am gonna grab a piece of pizza, definitely. Thank you. 14 years ago, yeah. Um, if they did 200 meals a day, mm -hmm. they thought. We did two fourth hour and two C lunch. We did two classes. Um, per hour and I personally am very tired. I don't know how the students do it. You know, you guys waking up every single day. Is something going on at your school that you think we should know about? If so, let us know. Take a photo or quick video from the event and post it to our Facebook page with a brief description for your chance to be featured on our next episode. And that does it for this week's Scrolling Around. I'm Alexis Ware. And I'm Danielle Smith. Always remember that you matter.